best three out of five. Let's play pickleball. Oh. Yeah, a big forehand to start, and Ben John's too big of a swing on that first volley well wide. Interesting where he went with that. Yeah, you could really see him manipulate the wrist. Often you slap that cross quarter, go middle. He goes right up the line in midair. Well, Ben's dropping early, as that was a, a forehand that he could have easily drive, so I expect more of the same from him. That one was just too short not to. And a really nice first volley after a quality drive from Ben John. So ball back over uh, to Piznik and Ball. Look at this, and a tweener, oh, comes up short. <laughs> oh, man. That was something. And that was one of those layup ATPs from Edda Wright where you can really slap it and bring it back into the court. So what hands from Deckel Barr? <laughs> yep, and that's that one-handed backhand out of the air from Deckel Barr that he has had some success with, and Edda Wright says no, 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 as she cracks a two-handed backhand counter. An extended look down at the court from Tina Pisnik. Possibly took a funky bounce, because she rarely misses that shot. What a read from Ben Johns. Yeah, uh, Deckel was loaded up on the wrong side. Dave is looking to crack a forehand, but what precision and accuracy from Ben going back on the backside. ATP defense, and that goes out, and at a right on the left there after the switcheroo. Yeah, Ben's not on the right too often, but he still hangs out in the middle of the court regardless <laughs> of what side he's on. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's a really nice job as Ben John's leaving that dink a bit high. And Deckel Barr taking the time away from Edda Wright. Three, two, two. Wow, Ben saw something that was going to be floaty, but it just kept carrying. Yeah, and, and, and Pisnik's shot did have backspin, and often those will carry, but that is a very aggressive court positioning from Ben. I mean, That's, this dude is, a, you just underlined very aggressive positioning. Yeah, on the previous one, and that one wasn't much different. So uh, he, he is looking to pick <laughs> Tina Pisnik's dinks off as. He often does, as I'm finishing my thought from the previous point. <laughs> Just Steve from Deckel. And for those that are new here, why are these dudes so aggressive in their positioning? You, you, you got to put pressure when you're the male in mixed doubles. Yeah, 
I know that is. A lot of amateurs question how much some of the pros, uh, how much court they take. I promise you the ladies are on board with this strategy. And you know, just when you have that longer wingspan and you can reach in the kitchen from a variety of positions to pressure your opponents, it's just the play. Coming in very hot and very deep. Yes, <laughs> and Deckel did a nice job of taking a bit of pace off uh, as that ball was in a very low position for Ben to attack. And uh, Ben there earlier in the game went back behind Deckel bar. This time he goes to the right side of his body. A nice job from Ben to switch up his attack spot. Oh, yeah, it touched him, but he still got it. That was unreal that he was able to get a clean paddle on that. I think it grazed his hand yeah. or his arm before he contacted it, though, so. Your athletes are too good. He went to catch it, <laughs> and he's like, well, maybe I can get a paddle over there. That's a phenomenal strategy from yeah. Michael Barr. And Just you might, brilliant. You might need six or seven more, unfortunately as 7-2 uh, commanding lead early. Oh my, that's gonna stay in too. Wow, just absolute chaos. <laughs> yes, after, I'll just say it, Ben, just a horrible drop shot for yes. him at the beginning of the point. But of course, he makes up for it. With a shank off the paddle <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Speaking of a shank, and that's what Duckle Bar serve can do. It is humongous. Heavy, so heavy, so much leverage from him. And when it skids off the court, that helps too. Great shot there from the Slovakian Olympian. Yeah, that's right. Tina Piznik played in the Olympics for her country. Yeah, amazing. I, I can only dream. Yes. That's cool. I mean, great job of avoiding a footfall. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going? Twinkle toes over there. Yeah, he had to as his momentum was going to carry him into the kitchen. Whoop. Seven, four, one. Wow, what a block off a great attack from Deckel. Yeah, I know it was cross court, but Ben was moving. So I, I don't mind the spot from Deckel Barr. Just, you know, solid, soft hand from Ben Johns after an extended dink rally. So longest point of the day, much like many others, go to Etta Wright.
full swing. Yeah, and she picked a great spot on the initial attack. Wow, what a earning and again. Deckel Bar swats at it with his left hand, but great read from Meta. Yeah, she's just hanging out over there waiting for it, and she got exactly what she was looking for. Nine, four, two. Wow, what lateral movement along the kitchen line from Ben Johns. That leads us to a game point. Yeah, he, he is really aggressively targeting those slice dinks of Tina Pisnik. And that'll do it. So Ben Johns and Etta Wright are clearly on Danks, and he's been everywhere. Quality punch from the chest. Ben has found the left side and the right side of Deckel's that body. That time he challenges here, here, the one. body, and Deckel has the response. Wow. Yeah, that's that's good stuff there from Edda Wright. She was, as Tina Pisnik was hitting that ball, she was loading up with the two-hander. It here, went here, to the here. exact spot she was hoping for, and she crushed it. Leaving the ball is a highly coveted skill. Oh man, it's so important, especially with how much power these players have. And of course you are playing with fire, but they're gonna have to go back behind Ben Johns at some clip in game two because his court positioning is more, more aggressive than usual. He had one of those uh, aborted Ernie's that he just pops up, but he got away with it, did Deckel? Like I said, uh, like I like to say, he used to just crack those into the net. I'm glad he takes a little pace off when he gets out of position now. with the Ernie catches the outside of the line. What a move from her. <laughs> yes, Tina Pisnik, good stuff on the Ernie and a great read. And man, these dinks are precise up at the kitchen line and they have to be. in there for a couple. Yeah, she did. And she really does a nice job uh, of throughout game one and here in game two of getting those blocks cross court to Edda. But every now and then Ben Johns gets that forehand in the way in the middle. So uh, just just so much pressure uh, from Ben in general and especially in this match. There's some pressure. Yes, exactly right. His male counterpart, Deckel Barr, squeezing the middle nicely. One, zero, two. Oh, I wanted to 
see what he was going to do if it had all the top spin and back spin on it. But uh, talk about redirecting. That's that block I was talking about from Piznik. Edda wasn't even out of position, and she struggled with it. Nice job from Barr and Pisnik. And if you think there's a swarm of bees coming at us, it's, it's the drone getting some great footage above this Humana Championship court. All good here, folks. Wow. Almost got there. Yeah, but uh, nice start here for, for Pisnik and Barr. They send the ball back over uh -oh. to Edda and Ben, but uh -oh. 3 0 is, is just what the doctor ordered in game two. Got to get that strap out of the way of our beloved neck cam. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think. <laughs> yeah, you, you, no, I think <laughs> was the progression uh, for Deckel Bar. That usually means you lose the point, but not that time. there but Ben Johns working in the middle and when his opponents pick the proper spot and timing to go back behind him he just neutralizes it with a soft block in the kitchen so tough to do that's what a speed up there from Deckel Bar right at the right hip of Edda Wright forcing her into an awkward paddle position you can't hit it any better than that Three, one, one. Nice non-spaz on the ball off the tape from Etta. Yeah, I, I would have. <laughs> we all would have. I'd have hit that in. That'd have been a souvenir for somebody. Yeah. This is where you don't remember, but when you're up, you're playing better. They're a little bit back. Just get one. Just you know, extend that lead a little bit. Unable to do so there. One, three, one. one. Uh, Tina got exactly what she wanted there, just cracked it right into the tape. Yeah, often looking for that backhand counter is Tina Pisnik, but she loaded on the proper side. Gave it a good crack, but couldn't come up with it. Adam, we've seen this team being Barr and Pisnik not unwind the stack before and leave Pisnik on the left today. It's 100 percent. Yeah, and, and I'm I am completely fine with that as long as it doesn't become an issue. And oh, excuse me. cross-court battle with a little block in the middle of a speed up from Barr as well. Yeah, nice, nice extended rally. And also uh, to touch again on unwinding the stack, the soft ball and the conditions play into that as well as, as being driven at is less of an issue. So you will see what we mean by that is Piznik running across the court to stay on the right. Oh. That, that looks like that singles backhand of Ben Johns where he just carves the outside of the ball. Ball just moving away from Deckel Bar the entire time. And of course, placing it in the corner of the kitchen paired with that is a lot to handle. We've seen that exact pattern a couple times at a right ready both times. The official ball of the PPA Tour.
Resnick and Barr have to dig in. for too much of an angle. Yeah, and after Ed Wright said, watch it four times in a <laughs> yes, row. Yes. And, and that, that is literally his best put away, is yeah. to slap her cross court. So, I mean, that, that one right there, I'm not even saying nine out of 10. That might be 98 out of 100 he's gonna make. Yeah, you think there's a little open court in the mid area and there just isn't. Yeah, and he, he just, Next time, we'll probably just hang out and hit a soft shot from that position. He came crashing in that time, and Tina Pisnik late on her slide to her right. That's a rare miss on the forehand dink from Ben Johns, but that says a lot about the strategy that that ball was not driven, because Tina Pisnik oh, was very yeah. late getting to the front right from the back left Three of the court. Oh, that was a very awkward swing there, and a nice shot from Deckel Barr after Tina Pisnik put out a couple fires to get him that opportunity. again from Piznik after another battle at the kitchen. Yeah, some, I mean, these, uh, the dink precision is on point from everyone. And the amazing thing for these ladies is they play the left side in women's doubles. So the fact that they are showing their stuff on the right side is very impressive. What a drop. Yeah, the, the, the slice, the side spin right in the corner of the kitchen. She's smooth. chance to tie it up. He did, and I, I really like both of his offensive attempts there, one at Ben and the last one at Edda. Just, just gotta tip your cap. A few more looks here at the at a right tanks now. Yeah, he is. Uh, those were going to Ben in game one, so nice job from him pressuring with court positioning and then coming up with good shots when he gets an opportunity. fire with that backhand roll and as great as Tina Pisnik is at blocking the ball she hasn't released on a lot of counters in this match and he knows that if she's not going to be dangerous with the counter he can just keep going after her Stuff from Beckel. It's a good pressure dink. 
inside out with the forehand from the middle of the court. And normally Ben comes up with that, but I think Deckel had a little extra on that one, forcing Ben backwards. Six, eight, one. Slide and counter from Meta right. Yeah, and she was, she was a hint late. So that's phenomenal paddle skills to put a quality counter after the big man Deckel Bar went after her with some offense. So the chance was there and they can't cash. Yeah, uh, Deckel did the pump fake, uh, the paddle abuse pump fake there as he is frustrated with himself after not coming up with that third shot drive. Eight, six, one. And a right is a monster. Three shot combination, two big two-handed backhands, and then the finishing blow on the forehand side. She didn't start the fire, her opponents did, but she finished it. Nine, six, one. Tremendous. The ladies taking every shot that the dudes are throwing at them. And then Tina got herself in good position and just didn't get an. So here we go. Game point. Just too much pace on that one from Big D. Yeah, that's that slapper up high on the forehand. I had a decent look out of it. Just too much pace. Wow, and what a grab and shot to go with it. And games one and When the world sleeps, greatness rises. And while others dream of the next level, we chase it. Challenging every limit. Turning obstacles into stepping stones. Because the next level isn't just handed to you. It's earned. Go next level with 6-0 Pickleball. Rock solid on the right side of the court here. Okay, <laughs> it's pissing it behind. I was like, what am I supposed to do? It was almost as if the Deckel Bar yell pushed Etta back as she was kind of falling back, but great stuff from Deckel on point one. And, uh, and Tina Pisnik looked to, to go for a bit of more of a power counter. She's just several feet off the kitchen line. Got to look for a better opportunity to counter with pace. Zero, one, one. Takes a lot of court, and that time he took the wrong piece of the court because Ada was ready. Yeah, she was, and she was well off the court to the right, so I think that had Zero something one, to play in Ben's court positioning, but she got back to where she was supposed to be. Point. 
Yeah, Etta moves way better than you believe. She just gets there. The anticipation, long stride, tall lady. One, one, two. Wow, tries to do the old no look and just uh, didn't work out. Yeah, it didn't. And I thought in game two, there were some nice adjustments made by Deckel and Tina. Tina went back behind Ben Moore. Deckel played uh, a cleaner game, and, and they still lost 11-6. So there's one change is what we saw throughout their matches and uh, Pisnik stayed on the left. That's some good natured uh, banter between Tina and Ben because Ben's partner later on is actually coaching uh, Tina a little bit, that being Colin Johns, his older brother. <laughs> that was very close to just hitting the big man in the chest, but the old shoulder tuck worked out for him after a nice forehand counter from Deckel Bar. Wow. There's a big exclamation from Deckel Bar trying to get him pumped up. He knows it is crunch time in this match. Beautiful from Deckel Bar. As we mentioned at the top, all of their matches have gone three. They certainly hope this one does not. <laughs> yes. Different day, different format. from Ben starting the fire and knowing most of those Tina Pisnik blocks are trying to be redirected to his partner at a right. So he anticipated that and instantly stepped to his right looking for a forehand and he found it. Yeah, and if, if, if a player is only going to reset, just keep hitting it at them, folks. I mean, it's just they're, they're not going to hurt you. Yeah, and she's one of the best at it and she had she did take a crack or two on counters not sure that was the proper decision given her court positioning but she has to mix that up a little bit and uh you know strike a bit of fear to go along with that silky soft touch that she has failed egg hunt in the corner so we get a new ball put into play difference between slice and topspin. When Deckel is sliding over to pick off an Edda right dink, they're in such a low position because that ball is tumbling down instead of moving through the court and sitting up. All right, Tina found a little backside offense there up the line against Ben Johns. Took seven more shots to finish, but... <laughs> hey. Uh-oh. Goes for an aggressive cut, and that's that trying to get to the other side, or as we call it, unwinding the stack. Yeah, plenty of topspin on that dink, but that one just too high as Deckel got a rare opportunity above the waist. Four, 
Why not ninth shot drive? Yeah, I mean, I know. I mean, you, you had a nice pattern going there. He has, he's working the grunt, too, right before he hits. So just go again, big man. All right, we got, we got something. We're tied up here midway through game three. I think that's been one of the biggest differences is Ben has found a bit more offense at Deckel than Deckel has found at Ben. As they've both been in a really similar pattern uh, looking to pick those shots off on the cross court dinks from the ladies. Pretty decent counter from Etta Wright, but right at the paddle of the big man. And Deckel Bar puts it down. Had a good recognition of how far over Deckel Bar was there, and he did. Second bounce. It was the second bounce that was amazing. Yeah, he, he would have had a much different yeah. reaction, so his reaction said it all. Six, four, two. Yeah, and, and, I, and I don't think that that is in Anna Bright and James Ignatowicz breakup of no. mixed doubles, but a smart move by James to get fully healthy, sit a tournament or a couple tournaments out. Get that shoulder situated, buddy. Maybe, maybe four years ago, you could compete at 75 or 80 percent. That is not a situation no. anymore. If you are not 100 percent, you're just flat out going to lose with these draws. Point. There's the value of that serve, and they are right there. They were right there in game two, and then a push from Ben and Etta, and they lost it. Let's see if they can keep this rolling. Oh no, that is absolute candy that he pushed well deep. Yeah, he was in perfect position. And, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't want to say something that's not there. He looks fine, but he's played a lot of pickleball and he has been moving aggressively yes. in this match. Field goal is good from Deckel Bar. Yeah, great decision to go up the middle from Deckel. Ben was breaking for the inside out, and Etta has to look for that sharp angle cross court. Just going to keep firing away because he's not scared of anything coming back at him. Yeah, well, I, I feel Tina's pain as I found myself in that pattern when I was straight up from Ben Johns, too. And actually, when I did crack a couple Seven counters, nine, that nine, didn't nine. work out great either. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful read there from the big man. And wasn't he in the middle of the court a second ago? Oh, he was. And he jumped from the middle of the court on that Ernie. So uh, it, it's it's phenomenal anticipation from Deckel Barr because uh, Edda Wright hasn't gone back behind him too frequently. She's been comfortable in the cross court uh, uh, dink rally. So great shot from Deckel. Oh, 
Uh, he's, he's, he's like, I was moving over here, Ben. Dina's like, Deckel, my hands are soft. I can get those. Stay on yes. your side, man. Sure. Yep, wrong and more wrong. Just phenomenal from the ladies back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Big shout out to the ladies because the, the boys are stepping in front. They are jab stepping and then not being able to get to the ball. So the ladies are handling all the pump fakes, all the moving parts of the fellas, and it just seems seamless for them. with a little slice of humor. He can't believe it happened. Oh my God, that is a short hop, side spin drive of sorts from the midcourt from Ben Johns for a dang clean winner. Wow. I mean, that's as good as you're ever gonna see right there. I mean, Deckel hit hard and it just, did, it just <laughs> and didn't matter. Deckel waits till he's in serving position to say time out and I could watch that over and over, man. That's just, I mean, because that's the thing, like blocking a short hop into the open court's one thing, but when that a lot, so <laughs> here we go. I, I think he just slightly mishit his two-handed dink, but he almost baited her right into it. As, as she had sat up around waist level, she went for it, and of course, Ben had the answer. Nice job from Tina Piznik. One back to the left side of Ben Johns, and then cracks one cross-court at Etta. Etta can't come up with it. And they kept Tina on the left, and she loses the cross-court dink battle, and we are at championship point. And that will do it. Pioneering their way to a title are Ben Johns and Etta Wright. So impressive. 11-4, 11-6, 11-5, and they win. Their well, guys, you found your rhythm, really dug in, and did not let up on the gas at all throughout this match. What strategies did you and Ben discuss for this team specifically before the match? 
It was really all Ben's plan. I didn't have <laughs> much of an input. I was just like, yeah, you got the plan. I'll, I'll make sure to execute it. And so, yeah, all the credit to him. <laughs> well, Ben, I don't know. I've seen you quite that aggressive as you were in this match. You really were taking over, making sure to insert yourself in those points. Why is that such an important strategy? Uh, yeah, I feel like I definitely play my best when I'm moving around a lot and uh, being aggressive. I, I even counter better and play better defense if I'm actually looking to be aggressive. So, uh, you know, Edda does a great job of uh, keeping the ball low. Um, you can always depend on her to make the defensive shots, and uh, she slides really well. So uh, I felt like there was a lot of freedom just to move laterally and, and be aggressive. So um, I felt like she really helped me to play really well. Well, guys, you've locked up a few MLP titles together. You now have a BBA title together. Talk about the preparation and training that goes into being able to convert on these big moments. Um, I think it's really just about trying to stay healthy, especially for me. <laughs> uh, last year, I struggled with a lot of health issues, and so just thanks to God that I'm, I'm feeling healthy enough. And, um, yeah. Congratulations, guys. We're going to move to trophy time. Nate Pepper from title sponsor Veolia will come on court to present. Nate. Ed and Ben, congratulations on that excellent victory. As the official sustainability sponsor of the PPA, the only would like to thank all the pro PPA players who came out this week on Tuesday to be part of our environmental cleanup day that we had at Lake Houston. It says a lot about these pro pickleball players that you'll come out during your tournament week and spend time making the Houston community a better place. So on behalf of all 220,000 of us at Veolia, I'm proud to award you with the Veolia Cup. Congratulations, guys. Ben Johns and Etta Wright are your champions, and look at the smiles on those faces. That says it all. So mixed doubles is complete. Now it is time for women's doubles, and do we have a treat for you. Rachel Rohrabacher and Anna Bright versus Vivian David and Jackie Kawamoto. Best of five. Will it go the distance? We'll find out that's what's next.